you to the St. Louis County Planning Commission virtual public hearing. This meeting is for the purpose of hearing presentations on petitions <clears throat> for rezoning or request for special procedure permits. I'm Wayne Hilsinger, Chairman of the Commission. In addition to the other members of the Planning Commission, I would like to introduce Jacob Trimble, Acting Director of Planning and the planners assigned to tonight's petitions. The Commission will not make a decision on petitions heard this, this evening. Normally, the Commission will receive staff reports and make a decision on tonight's petition at an executive meeting in August. Additional comments, letters, and, pet and petitions submitted to the Department of Planning within two weeks of, the, of this meeting will be distributed to the Planning Commissioners in their executive meeting agenda packet. If additional information is required, the decision may be delayed. The Planning Commission's recommendations will then be forwarded to the County Council who has the responsibility for the final decision. The meeting will observe the following guidelines. Planning department staff will show photos of the petition site, then the petitioner will present the request. They will be allotted 15 minutes. Then persons in favor and opposition or with concern will be allowed to speak for three minutes. Please note you may only speak one time. To indicate you wish to speak, click the raise hand icon to the right of your name on the participant list. Please keep your remarks brief and avoid repetitive or seconding comments. After all opposition speakers have spoken, only the petitioner will be allowed a five minute rebuttal to answer questions and points raised by other speakers. The commission may ask questions of any speaker. After the meeting concludes, a poll will appear allowing you to in indicate whether you are in favor, in opposition, or with concern. This is not a vote and is not binding on the commission or the county council. The purpose is to make the crowd count part of the record for each petition. And with that, we'll hear tonight's first petition, which is PC 20-22 Zoological Subdistrict the Metropolitan Zoo. Good evening, PC 20-22 Zoological Subdistrict of the Metropolitan Zoo is requesting an R th a rezoning from R3 to PS Park and Scenic for 3.72 acres located on the west side of Columbia Bottom Road, north of Laramore Road and south of Strodman Road. This location is in the Spanish Lake area in North County. And as you can see, the parcels in question for tonight's petition are, are four different parcels outlined in red on the map for you. For the surrounding land uses, we have the Wild Care Park, which is currently under construction. We have multiple single family homes. We have Columbia Bottom Conservation Area located to the east of these four parcels in question. And again, here's a larger aerial for you. Again, the four parcels in question are currently single family homes. They are outlined in red for you. This is track A locate, looking to the west. This is also from track A looking north um, down the road. This is south looking down the road. This is directly east. This is looking west. This is looking to the south. This is track B looking west. This is track B looking southwest. This is also track B looking west. This is track C looking west. 
This is track D looking west. This is track D to the north. And I would also like for the commission to note that the zoo is doing construction around all four of these parcels. Okay, Leslie, I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay, perfect. And then um, I'm sharing my screen. And you should be able to share it now. Here it is. And Joelle will kick us off. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Thanks for the opportunity to share um, a little bit about the St. Louis Sioux Wild Care Park and our desire to rezone those four um, residential properties. Um, so next slide. So um, what we're trying to accomplish with Wild Care Park are two sides of the same coin. It's uh, making sure that we do important conservation work for endangered uh, species through our Conservation and Animal Science Center, as well as have a great guest experience to connect people with animals and nature. Next slide. So, um, as you see, Wild Care Park is about 15 miles from the zoo. It is in unincorporated Spanish Lake, not far from Columbia Bottoms and the confluence. Um, so, what we're striving for with the construction underway with Wild Care Park um, is a great experience that delights our guests. It works well for the public and for the animals and the, the people who care for them. Um, and then we will have our Conservation and Animal Science Center that supports species recovery plans and uh, population sustainability. So, much needed space for endangered animals to breed. Um, so, Wild Care Park, it's, it's the future of zoos. It's, it's very unique in its focus on uh, mostly endangered species. Um, and we're so close to um, the St. Louis Zoo and um, the metro area, which makes it a really wonderful opportunity to combine the conservation breeding and the guest experience uh, and share conservation actions that our public can take to support um, animals and wildlife. Next slide. Uh, so, this is our, our current uh, conceptual design uh, that shows the elements of Wild Care Park. Um, we are going to leverage the existing core area and infrastructure present to draw our guests in. Um, we will have a South Safari experience where we'll put guests on vehicles and ride them around. A North Safari experience where we will do the same with a slightly different uh, mix of animals. And then there's a portion of the property that's the nature adventure zone um, that we will do some stewardship and restoration work in that area and provide hiking trails and walking paths through that area. And uh, particular for this um, hearing is the area in green, which is our Kent Family Conservation and Animal Science Center. And this portion of uh, the property um, is where we will focus on breeding those endangered species. We noted on here the stars where those residential uh, properties occur. Um, and our request is to um, rezone them to parks and scenic like the rest of Wild Care Park from their cur current zoning of uh, residential. And so with that, I'll let uh, Leslie just briefly describe the properties. So um, I will, the next few slides, I'll just run quickly through um, the property surveys we did for each of the, the starred um, the starred items on this map. We'll start at the, fur the furthest south, which is 12505 Columbia Bottom Road. Um, this property is um, roughly an acre uh, in size. Moving slightly north, we have um, another property, another residential property um, at 1254 Columbia Bottom Road. This property is um, 0.75 acres. Um, continuing to move along north along Columbia Bottom Road, we have 12727 Columbia Bottom Road at um, 0.97 acres. And then finally, our furthest uh, north property. Um, along Columbia Bottom Road is 12731 Columbia Bottom Road, which is one acre in size. Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, with that, commissioners, any questions? Anyone? No. Okay. Seeing no questions, uh, we'll make it right. Hey, hey, this is Keith. I had a question. Keith, go ahead. When are they going to have the dinosaurs there? <laughs> They're staying at the zoo, at least for the rest of this summer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else? Seeing none, Mel, you want to take it from there? If there sure. Yeah, so if there's anyone who uh, has a comment or a question, please click the raise hand button next to your name. If you don't see it, you can send me a message in the chat. I am the generic host. We do have a uh, speaker, Tiffany Schick. Tiffany, you are unmuted to give your comments. Hi, thank you so much. As a friend and neighbor here of the Wild Care Park, I was wondering if there are any um, illustrations of what those areas may look like um, moving forward after the rezoning that could be shared. Okay, we'll ask them to address that. Thank you. At this time, I don't see any other hands. Okay. And with that, uh, petitioner, can you answer her question? We are working on uh, some renderings that we will be able to share publicly soon. Okay. Okay, commissioners, anything else? Any questions? Or we let them know. I have one, Wayne. Uh, yes, yeah, go ahead. Just wondering, this is Bill Ballard. Just wondering, uh, have uh, any of the uh, neighbors been talked to or inquired about this personally to you guys? About the properties or the and the rezoning? Yes, the property and what you're going to do with it. Um, I know that some of the neighbors know that we have purchased those properties. Okay. And we have shared conceptually with our neighbors uh, what we plan to do with the park. Okay. And any neighbors that are a property that share a property boundary with us, we um, um, they have reached out if they have any questions, and we have gone to homes to answer them. Good. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Any any other commissioners? Seeing none, um, this concludes this hearing, and we'll go on to the next item. Appreciate it, and thank you. Thank you all. Have a good evening. You too. Thank next, you. we'll go to the last item, which is PC 21-22, Robert Distelkamp. Good evening. Uh, talking about PC 21-22, petitioner is Robert Dieselcamp. The request is to move from a C2, C2 to the C8 on a 1.18 acre tract. Uh, the location is the Northwest quadrant of Sheridan Road and Boundary Road. So you can see from the context map, um, the point of interest is in South County, right off of Telegraph Road near the Jefferson Barracks area. From this land use map, we can see uh, due east, there's quite a bit of parkland and green space. Um, on the Telegraph Road corridor, it's a mixture of residential and commercial uses. And beyond that frontage, um, uh, the areas and neighborhoods are dominated mostly by single family homes. Here's a larger context map of the general area. Here's a picture um, of the public hearing notice in front of the petitioner's parcel. This is the uh, commercial building behind uh, the petitioner's parcel. So we're facing north from the back of the building. Now we're facing into the parcel facing south. This is the, the back of the building. Now we're turning to our right and facing west. 
Now this is still behind the building, but facing east toward Boundary Road. This is the first image facing west into the property from Boundary Road. Here's another western facing image. Now we're facing east down Sheridan Road at the intersection with Boundary. Turning around, this is now facing west towards Telegraph. This is facing north into the property from Sheridan Road. This is facing south across the street. This is the uh, this is now facing north along the western side of the property. So now you have a sense of what the eastern side of the parcel looks like. And finally, this is the abutting western land use. Okay, Clay, I'm making you, uh, I think I'm making your computer the presenter. Let me know if I did the wrong one. You should be able to share your screen now. Can you see that and hear me? I don't see it yet. You have to click share. Oh, no, not yet. You'll have to click share down by your mute button and then PowerPoint or the PDF after you click share. Share. It's coming up now. All right. So can you see it and hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, my apologies. I don't know why my computer audio is breaking up, but I'm talking to you through my phone and working the computer on my my laptop here. So um, th this uh, this this request is to um, basically to use a site um, that was formerly uh, an AT&T um, an AT&T construction operation um, to use it as a general contractor. It's at 201 <laughs> Sheridan Road. Um, it's uh, it's 1.1 acres. The um, site is almost all existing. Um, we are proposing some landscaping, but um, you know, in general, very little, um, very little change to the site. Um, this this aerial depicts it pretty well. I've got another colored one, but I think this one is about as easy to see as anything. So that dark area that you see there um, is the is the building. There's a there's a office building that's on the right side or or east side right along boundary road then the larger um darker darker area on the to the north and, and then the gray area to the south that is a um enclosed covered parking area that um i presume that the at&t used to to park their trucks and and that kind of thing in um so there's there are existing Two entrances off of uh, Sheridan Road. One goes to the parking lot in front of the building along Boundary Road, and then one accesses the uh, the space to the rear. Um, this is the site plan that was presented. Uh, a little bit larger area. You can see that we are proposing to landscape along uh, Sheridan and along Boundary um, Roads with um, landscaping to meet the um, current landscape requirements. Um, we are asking for C8 because the C2 doesn't allow the flexibility of a general contractor's office. Um, this is a uh, this is a little bit easier to see. So the area that you see in gray is around the building it is all paved today. Uh, the, the dark center piece is the building. You can kind of see the delineation between the covered um, the covered and enclosed parking versus the building there to the to the right. There's another storage building, small storage building um, at the northeast corner that um, was built there by AT&T and it still remains today. Um, 
know, it's surrounded by um, C2, I believe, to the north and to the um, to the west. It's got the uh, the park and the and the cemetery to the to the south and uh, south and east. Um, typic typically, uh, here's a, here's a couple of pictures. This is the picture from Boundary Road looking um, towards the building, and um, this picture here is is along Sheridan. You can see that's a that's a masonry um, wall type fence that that goes um, almost to the back, as you could see in the picture before. Um, it just doesn't quite make it all the way to the end. Um, but this is be a general contractor's office. They have, you know, three to five full time employees um, in the building. Um, the, the rest of the the rest of the. Um, employees either, you know, show up in the morning and, and, and take take a truck out to the job site. Um, and then come back in the afternoon or um, a large majority of them. Um, show up a couple of times a week to to get um, supplies and to you know to, to meet about projects and they go but they then go directly from home um, to work so to work at the job site so um, it's really a, a I understand that it was a public utility um, before and this is not a public utility but the general use of this site is this is the same. Um, as it was when AT and T bought it, I know that um, Bob was looking for a um, for a property that um, would suit his needs, and this one came available, and he bought it. And I, I'm fairly sure that you know a lot of that happened during the pandemic. I'll let him discuss uh, some of those other things, but um, you know that's that's the proposal here. Um, if there's any specific questions I can ask answer about the site, I'd be happy to do so. I think Bob's here this evening also, and he could talk a little bit more. Yeah, why don't we go and hear, hear Bob, and uh, then we'll come back with questions. This is Bob Dieselkamp. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. So, uh, as Clay was saying, for, oh, probably about three or four years there, we were looking for an office in the South County area around the 270 loop. And I would find a parcel and I would call up Pat down at zoning and ask Pat, would this work? And, you know, we would discuss the, the, uh, options and, you know, quite a few of them. She's, she told me flat out, Bob, I'd have a hard time getting this one passed. This property became available December of 19. And I presented it to Pat when she was still there at zoning. And she said, that's perfect. She said, this has been. Uh, used as a construction office since 1975 when it constructed, fall right in, you know, uh, everything should be fine. And at the time, she verbally said, we might not even need to do a zoning change. We purchased the property on that uh, discussion with Pat, and I applied for occupancy, uh, filled out the paperwork exactly as uh, Pat and I went through it, and turned it in and no one showed up for the inspection due to the pandemic. And I really didn't know the fire marshal came in and he said, Bob, I have no trouble with what you're doing here. You've got all your safety devices in place. You're good. He said, you may or may not see county with the pandemic. And we really thought this was kind of just signed off until the uh, came back around. They said, well, no, you're going to need to take it to zoning. So we're trying to present it to zoning. And uh, as I said, we just, I want to maintain the same use the properties had since 1975, and we probably are not even a fourth of the volume of the traffic coming and going from the property. So, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Commissioner's questions. No. Um, what do you, in regards to vehicle repair facility, what are you talking about there? It, that's it. and here again, and I apologize. I filled this out as I was instructed to. <laughs> so Pat said, AT and T has this listed as a vehicle repair facility. She said, I want you to write the exact same thing down because at the time she thought she wouldn't even had to take in front of the board of directors or whatever and do all this zoning change. She thought it would be a like use and she could just 
signed to get us signed off to use it. And that's exactly how AT&T had their paperwork filled out. Uh, if you, there's a two car garage and at one time there's remnants of used to be maybe some car lifts that have been taken out and abandoned. So we think making some assumptions that they would do oil changes and whatnot on their service vans and pickups. And, you know, they had probably 20, 30 pickups on the property inside and outside that, you know, the guys would come in, get their work ticket, go out, do the job, come back and leave the truck there at night. And we just assumed they did their own vehicle maintenance there. But when I said, you know, vehicle repair, that would just be maintenance of our vehicles, like vehicle. AT&T did. Yeah, for what I remember this site, it basically, it was Southwestern Bell, then AT&T, and it was basically if the trucks were left inside and taken out in the morning and brought back in the evening. Um, so I guess I assume then they were doing some uh, the oil changes and such inside the garage. Um, the other question is in terms of outside storage, uh, what kind of items are you looking to do? If it would just, the only thing we would keep outside would be behind the screen wall in the fenced area that you can't see from the road. You know, your, your pictures are very clear of what we're keeping there. And uh, just minimal items. I mean, there might be some, we're, we're not a storage supply yard. If there's, 10 or 15 pieces of material that are needed for a job. There's times I'll have them drop ship there and then load them on a truck, you know, a few days later and haul them away. Some long studs, but nothing. We won't have uh, piles of debris out there. Put it that way, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hilslinger, at some point, may I also ask a couple yeah. of clarifying questions? Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I'm going to, to echo uh, Chairman Helsinger's question, um, you know, staff, I, I think we really need to know that what the materials are going to be. Um, so, kind of tell, detailing the nature of them. Um, additionally, what additionally, what sorts of vehicles are you going to be having um, parked here at the site? How many and of of what type? And additionally, can you describe the nature of your use that's immediately adjacent across the street? And can you can you discuss a little bit about that site and how this is going to interplay or, or anything that's been going on across the street as well? Well, Clay Vance is working on a whole separate proposal for what can happen across the street, and that's going to be another thing we bring to you. So across the street was purchased because it was a uh, uh, basically an eyesore, and we uh, I'm sorry, I got things popping up on my computer for some reason. Uh, uh, there were some homeless people living in some abandoned houses, and it was a very rundown area. We were just trying to clean up the neighborhood. And I think if you ask any of our neighbors, they're thankful for what we've done for the neighborhood by getting rid of that. And uh, we are going to present a plan for across the street to you. But tonight we're here to, you know, address the, the first needs of this building. And our equipment is pickup trucks, service vans, and I we own uh four pickup trucks and two service vans we don't have a fleet of a million cars coming in here as i say we're nowhere near the impact that at&t southwestern bell was on this property what about so, equipment any large equipment so we do have a few tractors yes okay i think it would be helpful for you to fully describe to the commission the full nature and extent of everything you're going to store and every vehicle that you're going to park Okay, but well, we have a couple small skid loader tractors. We have a couple mini excavators that we can actually park inside if we, and I've had them parked inside. We uh, have uh, two dump trucks and we have four pickup trucks and two service vans. And we're, as I say, we're not trying to store a warehousing operation as a reseller. If we have a special order product come in and it's, you know, like I say, some long material, I might have it drop there and it will sit there for a few days until we put it on a trailer and haul it to a job site. <clears throat> uh, 
this so you'll Gary Elliott, that. would you have um, like concrete farm stored or no, any we don't piping? Do any self, or... Yeah, no, we don't do concrete form work and stuff like that. Okay, what about piping? Storm, if there's storm. any kind of piping, it'd just be small PVC piping, but that's just a lot of that is things that are picked up off of job sites and sometimes end up in a dumpster and sometimes they're saved for convenience reuse items, but it's not pallets of pipes and things laying around. Okay. You it, said you'd ha you have uh, skid loaders, mini evacuators, two dump trucks, uh, two service van, and uh, two pickup trucks. What would you use? Pickup trucks, sir. I'm sorry. Saying, two pickup trucks. Oh, four. That would be four pickup trucks. I apologize, yeah. sir. Okay. And what would you use to pick up stuff that's larger than those uh, vehicles? Well, we we do have a couple of like, trailers that we put things on. Oh, so you would have trailers there too, then? Mm-hmm. Okay. How many trailers are you talking about? Oh, we have uh, two equipment trailers, and two larger equipment trailers, and two smaller equipment trailers. Okay, thank you. What what might help uh, clarify for some of us is what type of construction uh, are 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 you uh, providing? We're so we're a light commercial general contractor. So um, the general contracting business has changed over the years. We we don't self perform a lot of things that general contractors used to self perform. Like Gary had a great question: Do you have concrete forms? No. Those are specialty contractors that do that. So we're more of a construction management firm and our uh, equipment is job cleanup, job maintenance type situation. So we're more of, uh, you know, a little more on the construction management facility side, making sure the job moves quickly and it maintains clean site. And, and then you have subcontractors that you you use for a particular project yes we'll sub out the electric the plumbing the hvac all the that those type trades the concrete work yes sir okay thank you okay anyone else no uh, normal business hours i would think yeah we uh i have on the door six to four I'm the guys don't show up till like seven in the morning, but I'm there early. So I take deliveries from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. Seeing no one else, uh, Mel, you want to see if anyone would like to speak? Sure. So sure. if you would like to ask a question or make a comment regarding this petition, please click the raise hand button next to your name. If you don't see it, you can message me, the generic host, in the chat. Uh, first, we have Philip Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman, you are unmuted to give your comments. Hello, Hello. Commissioners, Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, participate on this evening planning commission meeting. I do have a couple concerns as well as uh, a statement from my childhood experience of uh, lifetime resident and then 25 year active duty military member. I have always honored and uh, been proud of the Jefferson Barracks and the Veterans Administration Cemetery that the main entrance to that cemetery is via Sheridan Road off of Telegraph Road. What my, my first concern is over the 4th of July weekend, I was going to the cemetery as now I am retired, I go to visit my veterans interned at the cemetery. And I saw that there was quite a bit of construction equipment with the, the new lot and fencing. And I was quite alarmed because I didn't expect that the VA was parking their construction equipment so close to the entrance where the funeral processions all enter on Sheridan Road and pass by that construction lot. But the fencing looked very similar to the rest of the VA cemetery fencing. Minus there's the barbed wire on that fencing in that construction truck lot. So I was ready to contact the VA and question them. Why are they so good at hiding their grounds and maintenance equipment yet? They have on full display for funeral processions and all guests. Visiting the number 1 
National Cemetery in the United States off of Sheraton Road, why would they park all that construction equipment for everyone to drive by? This isn't this isn't down on Bayless Road at Ready Mix Concrete Plants. This isn't down at Baumgartner Road or wait a minute, Coke Road, an industrial zoned area. Why are we entertaining industrial activities where it's a residential? I appreciate you tore down the two shacks, but that's not a place to park dump trucks. And I don't understand the POL and the other. POL is petroleum oil and lubricants in my military vocabulary. But you have hazmat materials that will eventually leach or and encroach on grave sites there at the VA cemetery. And I take a bit of offense to that. So when I was ready to go to the VA, I looked up and found out you were the owner for this new property. And you are now requesting this evening not only to change what was Southwestern Bell service vehicles, they are not a construction activity. You are the construction activity. They were servicing customers there in this in the region six St. Louis County area. So don't call them a construction activity. You are the construction activity. They were servicing customers in residential and commercial zones. So make sure you use your tone correctly on that. I would appreciate. You are the construction activity. That is not an appropriate entrance for our landmark cemetery. And I take a bit of offense to it that you're trying to coerce us because you're incrementing this request. You have two residential properties across the street that I have the photographs of your PNH backhoes or your Caterpillar backhoes and excavators that require 40 ton low boys and tractor trailers to transport. This isn't a simple service shop. This isn't a service administrative shop. This is a major construction yard right in front of our entrance to our national cemetery. I don't understand why we're allowing this. So your incremented scope of work for your rezoning, I question the planning commission, why are you entertaining a partial request tonight when Jacob Tremble just pointed out there are two residential zoned lots that will be forthcoming for additional rezoning consideration. So that is my objection to this planned activity. And I would appreciate you consider what would be a proper use for this area using the community development plan for district six. This is commercial zoned areas. Industrial zoned areas is Coke Road and further on out away from the veteran cemetery. Let us honor the national interned veterans and let us give consideration to the public that are visiting probably the most visited by out of state residents is off of this Sheridan Road access to our National Cemetery. Thank you very much. Thank you. I do not see any other hands raised at this time. Okay, seeing none, uh, would the petitioner like to answer those comments? I would if I could. Yes. Please. And Joe oh, and I honor our veterans and uh, I would never try to do anything that uh, uh, would be a disgrace to that cemetery. Now, uh, we do not have any hazmat material stored there. Um, and we don't, that parcel across the street, we haven't made up our mind what to do with that. It, there's been all kinds of things talked about. I'm not saying that that parcel across the street is going to be a construction storage yard for large equipment or anything like that that is not not what here i'm here to ask for and i am very respectful of the uh the looks of that property as we come into the cemetery that's uh we needed a some kind of security to keep uh for safety to keep uh the homeless and the kids from being around there and that's why we purposely put up a black fence so it looked nice and did not look like a rusty old uh, uh, dilapidated property while we figure out what to do with that parcel. Um, we're, you know, trying to uh, maintain that neighborhood to look nice. And I go out of my way and with respect for uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July weekend, and make sure the property's mowed, cleaned up, picked up, 
Uh, no, I, 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 and I apologize if you took offense to anything that we did. That is not our intention whatsoever to uh, uh, not make that look respectful for uh, people visiting the area. As you know, when you come off of Sheridan Road there, um, I would have to say that there are possibly some properties that are far more in question than uh, what we have going on. So if you have any more questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, commissioners, any questions? Well, <clears throat> Seeing none, uh, this concludes this hearing and we, we thank you and everyone who participated. And with that, uh, we'll, we have nothing for the good. No. Dick? Okay. And with that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Make a motion for adjournment. Second. I second it, Bill Banner. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 7 0. And we were adjourned till uh, when's your next meeting, Mel? July 25th. It should be a 4 p.m. meeting since it's okay. just an executive meeting. All right. Thank All right. you. Thanks, All everyone. Right. Have a nice Bye -bye. evening. Bye -bye.